Hey, hey, welcome back and in today's video, Alice in Wonderland. A text message? Pizza's on the way. Alice in Wonderland, you know it well. You grew up with it, and if you haven't seen it, for the love of God, get cultured. The famous rabbit scene. He's very late. He has things to do. Now, we all remember Disney's version of Alice in Wonderland. It's probably the most familiar be between us all. There are wild symbolisms in this. Some think that this is a connection to the Monarch Mind Control Project. They think that Alice in Wonderland, Disney's version, and other movies Disney has to do with are used as programming. Now, as scary as that sounds, let's figure out more about these monarch mind control symbolisms. IlluminatiMovies.net has a very interesting article on this exact thing. The film retains the too tall, too short motif, which served to illustrate the dramatic physical changes we go through during puberty. The main character, Alice, also learns of reality of social hierarchies, thought her interactions with the Red Queen, proper social behaviors, the tea party scene, and has existential crisis typical of growing up in her encounter with the hookah smoking caterpillar. <laughs> Who are you? Well, I, uh, I hardly know, sir. I've changed so many times since this morning, you see. I do not see. Follow the White Rabbit. According to Monarch Mind Control researcher Fritz Springmere, the White Rabbit plays an important role in mind control programming. The White Rabbit is able to switch between all of different personalities programmed into Monarch slaves. When the rabbit says, eat me or drink me, the programmer is able to travel between different parts of the system. The White Rabbit serves a similar function as the rainbow in The Wizard of Oz. What are they talking about? Let me show you. In the Monarch Mind Control Project, they submit them to certain trials. Some are very abusive and it instills into them different parts of their personality and trigger words that when they hear these things or these actions, they do different things. Monarch Slave contains different memory fragments or even personalities. There's a need for so-called trigger, which can switch the victim's alter from one to another for staying undetected in public. Those have to be inconspicuous. So basically, they don't know that they are programmed. So when these trigger words happen, it automatically switches to alternate personalities. Let us not forget the checkered floor symbolism. We've talked about it before on the channel all last year, and it is alive and well in Alice in Wonderland. The Masonic checkerboard, it's in every Masonic lodge. It stands for the duality between good and evil. One of the most important symbols in the Illuminati for it is used in ritualistic ceremonies. This is used because black and white is a symbol for duality or the base of consciousness. Base consciousness is important because it is where all other states of mind arise. Personally, I like to think that checkerboards are symbols uh, for the celebrities being pawns. It's very easy for them to be instilled. There's a lot of checkered floors everywhere. And when they see these things, guess what? They are triggered to do things. I mean. Have you seen Kanye West as of recent? Yes, the classic running theory is that Disney's Alice in the Wonderland and Disney movies alike are made to program us from a young age. I am probably even programmed. Or not because I am equipped with the Illuminati protection goggles. But we can't forget, Disney wasn't the creators of Alice in Wonderland. The story of Alice in Wonderland was inspired by many things out of Charles Dawson's life. His real name was not that, but Lewis Carroll. Now this was in 1800s, uh, he knew a girl named Alice. There's a really creepy story with that. We'll get into that later. And her whole family, her father and everything. Alice's father could very well have been the white rabbit. For the Dean was always running late too. Symbolism of the rabbit hole. 
It is said that the rabbit hole can be found in the dining hall of Christ Church, Oxford. Alice's father would have dined at the high table with other senior members of the college. After dinner, the senior members did not drop down amongst the undergraduates, but went through a paneled door to the left of the spot. There's a lot of different things that the book was inspired from, from real life. I can't go through them all. But what I will do is to put this link in the description so you can check them all out. This is how the real story of Alice in Wonderland began. Lewis Carroll, the author, often told stories to his children friends, amongst which Alice and her sisters. Sometimes these stories, which he made up on the spot, were told when they were visiting him in his room, sometimes on other occasions like river picnics. And I, I know, I know that that gives you the uh-oh feeling. The story of Alice's adventures in Wonderland arose on the 4th of July of 1862. Charles Dotson, his friend, revered Canon Duckworth, and sisters Alice, Lorena, and Edith Lindell were on one of their boat trips on the River Isis. Alice grew restless and begged Dotson for a story with lots of nonsense in it. Dotson began and, as usual, invented the story while he was telling it. Much of the story was based on a picnic a couple of weeks earlier when they had been caught up in the rain. The real Alice from Alice in Wonderland was actually the daughter of Carol's boss, the Dean of Christ Church College at Oxford, where Carol taught mathematics. Everyone who was employed by the school lived on campus. This is, this is Alice, the real Alice the story was inspired from. This is probably not who pops into your head when you think about Disney's Alice in Wonderland, but I am interested in which version of Alice are you most familiar with? I got a link in the description that'll head you over to the Repzilla Twitter with descriptions so you can let me know. This is where it's about to get really creepy and probably ruin your childhood. I don't know what it is about Hollywood uh, and, and these kinds of things, but it's, it's rampant. The fairy tale might have stood the test of time, but the true story behind Alice in Wonderland, well, it's just a little bit creepy. Lewis Carroll was the pseudonym for Charles Ludwig Dawson, who was born in England in 1832. When he reached 18, Dawson left home and attended Oxford University where he stayed for the next 20 years. He was a student and then a professor and then a mathematician, so he was doing pretty good for himself. Carol was known for forming close friendships with children and not really having any relationships with adults. He established friendships with children of his colleagues and acquaintances and would spend lengthy periods of time with them and send them letters. And if that wasn't creepy enough, you might want to see what he was writing. Extra thanks and kisses for the locks of hair, he once wrote to a 10-year-old girl. I have kissed it several times for want of having you to kiss, you know. Even hair is better than nothing. When Henry George Lindell became the Dean of Christ Church of Oxford, Carol became close with his three daughters, Lorena, Edith, and Alice. And the legend of the story begins. In 1862, Carol, along with one of his colleagues, took the three girls out on a picnic and a rowing trip along the Thames. To keep the young girls entertained, Carol started telling them a story which would eventually become, that's right, you guessed it, Alice in Wonderland. These are the three girls here. After spending a few years refining and editing the story, he published Alice's Adventures in Wonderland in 1865, before writing the sequel, Through the Looking Glass, and What Alice Found There. Carol was known as a keen photographer and took photos... Childhood is over. I'm sorry. Because the rest of this uh, article gets very creepy, I'm gonna just put it in the description so you can check that out. So that's just absolutely the creepiest origin story that I have ever heard. But let's stay focused. Why does Disney take these movies? And this is not the only one that you've heard weird things about. They're also seriously symbolic and the symbolisms why do they want to program? Why are they trying to get in our head? You can see she's floating down the rabbit hole here. Very, very symbolic. But if you don't know anything about symbolisms, you wouldn't know. The fact that she has, whoops, stumbled and fell into the unknown is a premise of trauma-based mind control that the MK Ultra project used. MK Ultra was a real conspiracy that was proved to be true. It bases everything off 
compartmentalization and just breaking it down. Once the brain is thrown into the unknown, they use different techniques to access certain parts of the brain based on trauma so they can easily hypnotize. Entire systems can be embedded into the subject's mind along with trigger words, alt personalities, and access codes. I'm going to also put a link in the description to Monarch Programming Alters and Triggers that kind of highlight exactly what I'm talking about. Now, I know that this is crazy and it's super freaking interesting and whether you remember Alice in Wonderland as the fun loving uh, Disney movie that the majority of us do remember or you actually know the truth of the creepiness of the origin it really does not matter because things mean different things to different people but as interesting as this is I'm always more interested in that's right you guessed it I want to know what you think, so why don't you go ahead and leave your creative and or interesting responses in the comment box below. Thumbs up if you like. And as always, brothers and sisters, I will see you in the next video. There is more to that video than could be put into one video. I might go more in depth. I'd like to see in the comment section uh, different things that I've missed that you caught, uh, different things that you want me to break down. There's so much to this story. Because I know that you're repping if you're not repping your Greg. And how do you become a member of the Rep Squad? All you gotta do is subscribe with notifications turned on and be in the comment section to every single video because I'm gonna be there. Greg the Cat's gonna be there, and the rest of the Rep Squad community is going to be there. And I expect to see you there too, because this channel loves you.